Hi, good evening, teacher. Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Thank you. I will bring my coffee. I'll be right back. Of course, thank you. Your time. Hey, hello, welcome everybody to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. Okay, so as usual, we're going to check about the platform first. And here is it. So this is the class of tonight. And the homework is the 3.7. So you just need to come here and click on the um, correct answer, send it, and that's it. Okay. And uh, we're going to check about the attendance right now. Let's see how it goes. Okay, Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Liliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. 
José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. José Osmín Rivas Navas. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brán Mejía. Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Present teacher, good evening. Ah, ok, William, ok. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. William Alexander Ramírez Flores. Present. Good. And Wendy Patricia Morina Duarte. Okay, very good. And let me just check something here. Uh, Marcus is coming as well. Okay. All right. And just sell as well, okay. I'm here, teacher. Okay, perfect. I'm checking into that one right now. Okay, so uh, we are going to start a class. teacher present. I, I wasn't there. Uh, Fernando Com is here too. <laughs> ah, okay, very right. good. Sure. That's fine. <laughs> Got you there. Very well. Perfect, perfect. So, uh, and let me check. Yeah, I have everybody. All right, we're going to start uh, with a little video. Okay, so as usual, we're going to see the video and then we're going to we're going to comment, uh, provide opinions about that one. So, here we go. Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome back to Accounting Stuff. I'm James and today we're talking financial statements. The income statement, the balance sheet and the cash flow statement. I'm going to try and explain all the basics in under eight minutes, which is going to be a challenge because we have a little puppy here who's uh, trying to bite my finger. So let's get started. What are financial statements? Financial statements are reports that summarize the activities and financial performance of a business. They're prepared at the end of each accounting period and they're designed to give investors and lenders a feel for a business's financial health. The three main financial statements are the balance sheet, the income statement and the cash flow statement. Now I'll explain how each of these work with an example. Teelicious is a family-run business that produces a popular blend of black tea. Their financial year has come to a close and they finished putting together their financial statements. So let's look at them. We'll start with the balance sheet. What is a balance sheet? The balance sheet is a financial statement that gives us a snapshot of a business's assets, liabilities and equity at a single point in time. The balance sheet is also called the Statement of Financial Position and it looks like this. In the header, we have the business's name followed by the name of the financial statement. And directly below that, we have the point in time that we're looking at, a snapshot of December 31st. On the left-hand side of the balance sheet, we have a list of everything the business owns, its assets. And on the right, we have everything the business owns owes its liabilities and equity. Tealicious owes liabilities to third parties like its suppliers, its employees and the tax office, but it also owes equity back to the owners of the business. This includes their original capital contributions, which is the cash the owners injected into the business, and retained earnings, which are the cumulative profits that the business has held onto. If we collapse the balance sheet down into its core components, then we can see that Tealicious has total equity of $129.5 million. What does this mean? Well, if the business were to suddenly sell off all of its assets and pay off all of its debts, then in theory, this is how much money the owners would get. At the bottom of the balance sheet, Tealicious has total assets of $169 million, and total liabilities and equity of $169 million. The stuff it owns is equal to the stuff it owes, so the balance sheet is in balance. Which is fantastic news because a balance sheet always has to balance. 
Why? Because it says so in the accounting equation. Assets shall always equal liabilities plus equity. Or the stuff that a business owns is equal to the stuff that a business owes. What is an income statement? An income statement is a financial statement that summarizes a business's revenues and expenses over a period of time. If the balance sheet is a snapshot of a point in time, then the income statement is more like a video or a boomerang covering a range of time. The income statement looks like this. As you can see in the header, the income statement covers a period of time. The year ended December 31st. And in the body of the report, we have a summary of revenue earned and expenses incurred. If we collapse it, then we find that the income statement is really showing us three things. Firstly, Tealicious made $255 million in revenue, which is their top line income that it earned from selling products during the year. Secondly, it incurred $248 million in expenses. This includes the direct and indirect costs of running the business. And finally, when we subtract expenses from revenue, we see that Tealicious generated $7 million in net profit on the bottom line. Profitability is key to the income statement, which is why it's also called the statement of profit and loss. It tells us how much profit the business earned over a period of time. But be careful here because profit doesn't necessarily translate to cash flow, which is why businesses also need a cash flow statement. What is a cash flow statement? A cash flow statement is a financial statement that shows a business's cash inflows and outflows over a period of time. Businesses need to make a cash flow statement if they are using accrual accounting. You see, there are two methods of accounting. We have the cash method and the accrual method. The cash method of accounting is often used by smaller businesses. It says that revenue is recognized when cash is received and expenses are recorded when cash is paid out. Under the cash method, the income statement and the cash flow statement are equivalent to one another. If cash comes in, we record revenue, and if cash goes out, we record an expense. It's nice and simple, but it has its limitations. What if Tealicious makes a large sale, but the customer doesn't pay the invoice until the following accounting period? Their revenue could be understated in the period that they made the sale and overstated in the following period when they received the cash. There has to be a better way. And thankfully there is. The accrual method says that we should recognize revenue as it's earned and record expenses as they are incurred when the substance of the transaction takes place. This means that cash inflows and outflows aren't equivalent to revenues and expenses. They need to be tracked separately in the cash flow statement. A cash flow statement looks like this. In the header, we have the period of time that it relates to, just like we had in the income statement. And in the body, we have two main sections. At the bottom, we have the opening and closing cash balances for the financial year. We get these numbers from the balance sheet. Tealicious started out with $11 million and finished up with $12 million. So overall, that's a net increase in cash of $1 million. But how did this come about? This is where the top section comes in. We work out the cash flow from operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. Cash flow from operating activities covers regular business activities. How much cash Tealicious brought in and spent whilst selling tea? Tealicious is using the direct method, so this section mirrors an income statement prepared under the cash method of accounting. Cash flow from investing activities looks outside of the core operations of the business. These are the cash inflows and outflows from investments and buying or selling property and equipment. Cash flow from financing activities is all about funding the business, either through loans from banks or equity from the owners of the business. If we collapse this all down, then the net cash flow on the top should match up with the net cash flow on the bottom. It does here, which means the cash flow statement is reconciled. 
Let's do a quick recap. The balance sheet gives us a snapshot of a business's assets, liabilities and equity at a single point in time. It shows us what a business owns and what it owes. It also tells us how much the business is worth to its owners. And then we have the income statement, which shows us a business's revenues and expenses over a period of time. When we take the difference, we can see if it made a profit or a loss. The cash flow statement reveals a business's cash inflows and outflows over a period of time. These are reconciled back to the movement in cash in the balance sheet. I've made videos and cheat sheets covering each of these financial statements. You can find links to all of that down in the description. And a big thanks to all my channel members. You know who you are and I appreciate your support. Okay, perfect. So what did we get from this video? Okay, this is uh, very important information. Uh, if we don't deal with numbers, we we could be good at sales, we could be good at production, but is, if we don't deal with numbers, if we don't if we don't do well or do good with the numbers. We will be problems in our project, our company, our organization is is uh, having problems. You'll be having problems. It is important to know all of these uh, aspects, all of these uh, statements, like financial statements. I I, I have some some doubts uh, uh, about uh, what is equity. I I have the idea what is equity, but I don't have the the, the the full idea. And there's other uh, screws, something like that. Not uh, what, what was the two methods at, at the end. Two methods, one method is uh, the traditional method. I, I don't remember the name. And the, the other one is was something like screw. And uh, that is, Concept, but I have some idea because I, I, I see them in Spanish, but in English, it, I don't the, the clear the clear idea what it is. But uh, in general, it's an important information. We need to know, not only know, we need to go deeper in the accountant of the company because uh, if not, we get trouble. Okay. So yeah, perfect. Thank you. Definitely, this is. I believe that uh, whenever we see a topic, we realize how important is that one, right? Because, I mean, inventory is important, production is important, marketing is important, logistics is very important. Uh, a lot of things are important, and if something is not going well, it's going to impact the business in one way or another. About the doubts that you have, actually, we're going to read about that uh, today. So it's going to be about the statement, so we can check into that one. Good. Any other comment on the video? Well, in my case, teacher, I believe that a financial statement is really good when you have a your business could be a small or big one, uh, but it's really good because you have the control of the incomings and your profit. So, and also uh, maybe you can control uh, where the money is driving. Okay, so definitely, so, uh, go ahead, I'm sorry. That's why it's really important for the business. And also could be for, uh, for a um, particular person. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, this is for us to have, I'm sorry, you were going to say something. No, no, no. Okay. So yeah, it's it's a very important thing. It's like a picture of your business, right? So you will be able to understand what's going on. Where are you? Also for the budgeting, remember that we also have this uh, financial statement pro forma. So that is going to be projected for the future, right? So also those are very important. So uh, we are going to, uh, well, we have a lot of information for today. Uh, if it's not finished, we're going to continue tomorrow. Tomorrow we have, 
the homework that is the words, of course, that usually you bring two or three words and the story that you are going to tell to everybody and where what was the source of the story. Um, so we're going to continue with the book by now. So this is how to deal with numbers in writing. So uh, let's see. Um, who's going to read this? Um, Steve, could you please help me reading this chart? Yes, sure. Pleasure. Um, number one. Uh, from where it says numbers, that is on the top uh, here. Okay, okay. Uh, <clears throat> numbers are common place in business communication. There are three basic guidelines. Guidelines. Consider guidelines to consider when using numbers in writing. If a number is not expressed in more than two words, write it using words. One, there are five major expenses that are usually forgotten when budgeted for straps. Taxes, equipment, insurance, trailer marks, and software services. Two, there are three Items that a startup budget should present costs to get the business started. How long will the, the business take uh, take to break even um, an ongoing cost? <clears throat> uh, second, uh, use numbers to show dates, times, addresses, percentages, exact sums of money, or section of document and books. One, the investor want to see the final budget no later than March 26th. Uh, two, the balance sheet reflects $5,000 in accounts payable. Uh, three, the venture capital investor is asking for 25% equity of the business in exchange for $1 million. Uh, four, whatever you can do, from four by four room on the 19th tenth. floor, 10th tenth, tenth, tenth floor, on an office building. You can do it from home, no needed to rent an office. Hmm. Okay, very well. So, uh, yes, I mean, this is kind of easy. I uh, saw. So... Numbers are commonplace in business communication. So we really need to know how to say the numbers. It's very important because if you say the wrong number in business, that can cause a huge impact on the transaction that you're doing. There are three basic guidelines to consider when using numbers in writing. If a number is not expressed in more than two words, write it using words. So this is like for, for you to write in a formal way. So if it's just... Uh, one number, I mean, is uh, something that is from zero to nine, and then you write that in words. There are five major expenses that are usually forgotten when budgeting for startups. Taxes, equipment, insurance, trademarks, and software services. There are three items that a startup budget should present costs to get the business started. How long will the business take to break even and ongoing costs? Okay, and uh, well, second part says use numbers to show dates, times, addresses, percentages, the exact sums of money or sections of documents and books. So that is something that we already know. Uh, for example, the investor wants to see the final budget not later than March 26th. The balance sheet reflects 5000 in accounts payable. The venture capital investor is asking for 25% equity for the business in exchange for $1 million. Whatever you can do from a 4 by 4 room on the 10th floor of an office building, you can do it from home. No need to rent an office. Okay? So this is like the normal way that we usually do in Spanish. Number three is some numbers in a sentence or paragraph require more than two words, then use numbers themselves throughout the selection. 
So maybe the most important whenever we're writing is that if the number is, uh, it requires only one word, you can use a word itself. But if it's two words, like, I don't know, 27, and then you have to use numbers. That is probably the most important one. Do you have any questions about this? Okay, very well. So we're going to do the exercise nine with the excerpt below uh, about two expenses that are usually ignored in the budgets of startup companies. Correct four mistakes related to the use of numbers presented in the box above. Compare your answers with class. So I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to check into this and then you will be able to, to um, continue on this. Uh, I mean, to check what will be the mistakes and check what we can do. So I'm going to provide you a few minutes and let's see how it goes so we can compare.
Okay, did you finish already? Yes, teacher. Perfect. So on the first paragraph, where is the first mistake? In the instead of uh putting the number three, it's better to write the, the word three years. Well, very good. In the first three, and that is with word, not with a number. Nice. Mm -hmm. What about the other one? Very good. So 15,000, it should be a number, right? Mm -hmm. Not uh, in letters. Very good. What about the second paragraph? What is the first one? In the, in the second line? Uh -huh. When we have 1,000, uh, this uh, uh, is in words a few thousand dollars. Very good. Because, a few, uh -huh. Uh -huh. So a that few one, thousand dollars. Because it's just one word, right? So it's going to be a few thousand dollars. Yes, and it doesn't make sense. A few, it's not make sense with numbers. Yeah, it's, it's not good, uh -huh. right? It's not correct. It's like yes. all right, and what about the other one? Teacher, in the previous, in the last line of the first paragraph, I seen it. It, it could be ten to fifteen thousand in words. I think looking at a ten to Number. fifteen thousand, and the same at the. At the end of the the last line of the second paragraph, three uh, to five thousand per year in okay. words. From ten to, to five. Ten to fifteen in the yeah. first paragraph of the last line. Yeah, I, I get what you what you mean. Mm, mm. Just using words. Yeah, just he says word, just yes. using words. Ten to fifteen. Mm. Actually. Okay. It's, not correct just because the word thousand fifteen thousand if it's only ten to fifteen yes it's correct but if it's ten thousand to fifteen thousand because there is ten thousand right it's so two you... words fifteen thousand exactly so it has to be both in numbers numbers the so same at, word, the, at the end of the second paragraph exactly uh, at the end it of is. the second you say i'm sorry and when you're speaking, you must clarify uh, that are, we're talking about dollars when you're speaking. Well, when you're speaking, yeah. Yeah, it's ah, okay. unless, unless, I mean, you, everybody knows that we're talking about dollars. Everybody's right? looking at what you are reading. Uh, okay. Yeah. And yes, the other one is at the end of the paragraph, right? So it's going to be in numbers, 3,000 um, to 5,000 per year. Just these two words. Exactly. So the 3,000 and 5,000. So that is going to be in numbers as well. So as you can see, the rule is very simple, but sometimes those little things that we don't know or we don't use uh, may cause an impact in a test, for example, if you are, uh, or if you present a, a paragraph or paper to uh, other people, then might cause an impact, definitely. Teacher, I have a curiosity. It's not related to this topic, but I don't know if in English does exist any sign or something like in Spanish we have when we are writing down our paragraph and we cut a word we have the a dash okay. we have a dash and then we continue with the same word so we can uh part in this word in two does in English is this like a sign or something like that or no um, I have seen some papers that they use the same thing, but uh, in the most of the cases, what they do is uh, they move the whole word. The whole word, exactly. Yeah, to the next. So exists the exists the symbol, the same rule, uh, mm -hmm. but people they prefer because of professionalism to move the word. Oh, so, but but is it so the same symbol, the the dash, is has the same usage like in Spanish in in yeah. English. Well, yeah, you can use that one. Maybe the main problem is uh, that the separation of the syllables in uh, English um, is totally different, right? So it's not going to be the same. 
Mm, okay, got it, got it. Yeah, so Thank yeah, it's it's phonetically, so uh, sometimes it's kind of strange for us, but uh, for them, is is it makes mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. not, it's not like in Spanish that the the vowels they're strong; they have just one sound, but in English they have different sounds. Exactly. So there are different uh, separations. Sometimes they can be four letters together because that is a syllable and mm. so many many rules for that one so yeah. uh, that's why people they do not prefer they prefer just to move the whole word okay thank you it's a pleasure very Did well you... uh -huh, go ahead I, I am still thinking in the in the numbers okay. in the rule the first rules this says uh, if a number is not expressed in more than two words more than two is is talking about three three words is um, uh, yeah it's not it's more than two words why is it using words and and the second part is uh, uh, we are talking about uh, 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 exact sums of money like in the second the balance sheet reflects uh, five thousand is exact five thousand. But we are talking about uh, in the first paragraph about ten to fifteen. It's not a chat. It's something in between. Yeah, I, I get 15, your point. It's not a chat. Uh, in the yeah. same in the, in the second one, three to five thousand per year no, uh, are not exact quantities. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand your point. The thing is that in this case, because of the number, I mean. Uh, it's, it's better for uh, for you to represent that one in numbers. I mean, 10,000 to 15,000. So that should be the, the proper way. It, it says two words, but most likely it's going to be one word. Whenever you have one word only, so 12, 20, yes, you can use that in, in words, but not in numbers. But the other way around, it should be most likely in, in numbers. So that's why here is going to be like 10,000 in numbers and then 15,000 in uh, in numbers as well. Okay, but, okay. Okay, very well, perfect. Uh, let me see, we're not gonna build a budget, definitely, so that is too much. But what, yeah, what we're gonna do, exactly, we, we're going to check some examples of budget. I mean, uh, we're, we're speaking about that one, uh, but we need to see what they look like, right? So this is, a six month budget. So it's a very short example. So you can see here, we have the incomes and the expenses. So that is the most basic, as you may remember. Most basic is to, to speak about income and expenses and divide them, right? So in different categories, okay? At the end, you are going to uh, try to find if you have a surplus or a deficit. Surplus is a positive number, for example, uh, 430, that is a surplus, and 73, the one in red, is a deficit, right? And that's the only thing that we need to do for the budget. This is a simple example, but this is something very interesting. So you can see here all the things that we have, and this is more like a personal budget. I mean, that's the salary. Uh, if you have a business, what you're going to get from your business, and no dividends, uh, interest income, any other incomes. And then all the expenses that a person might have. So, uh, yeah, that would be it. Uh, also, you need to, uh, for example, in others or in some parts like um, uh, emergencies, you should get some money, uh, save some money or budget some money for, uh, I mean, in cases that you get sick or if the car is broken. I know that uh, we should do that one, but sometimes it's difficult because, I mean, uh, we don't have that much money. And this is another example. So uh, this is about a little company. Uh, the company is about uh, this person, Easy K, and she is 33 years old. The location is in Maine. Her job is customer support designer and small business owner. Uh, live with partner and the dog. The business says what we sell, a line of fine jewelry and custom wedding bands. Uh, is five years old. Uh, they have a website, wholesale to stores, and custom work. And the setup 
single members, uh, as a limited company. Uh, uh, she does almost uh, the whole thing. Uh, I mean, this is something that's covering here. Let me just close this. All right. So um, from production to shipping. So it's a small company that she does everything. And uh, before the COVID, the revenue was from $50,000 to $90,000 a year. In 2020, it was around 64000 So it decreased that one. And the profit from business was about, uh, in the year 2020, $30,000. Okay. And cash on hand. So these are like different information that we might find uh, important to build the, the budget, right? So we have the business true expenses and uh, debts. She doesn't have any debts. Um, and inflow. So those are like the things that we use for the statements. So the inflows it will be from three three thousand to twenty thousand dollars. So uh, depending, as you can see here, uh, sometimes there are high seasons and low seasons. So that might cause that one. And here is the budget, right? So uh, the format is a little bit different, but at the end, it's going to be like the same. We have the drawn contractor pay. The uh, credit card payments, monthly expenses, uh, GEO part two. So those are expenses, quarterly expenses, variable expenses, shows or travel, and uh, I mean, infrequent variable expenses, annual expenses, savings, and what is the total need. So that will be it. Um, so these are like the information that you need so you can build a small budget. I have another one that this is this one. Let me just check into that one. Oh no, this is a little exercise that we were going to do. Let me just check, but it moved. Uh, let me then just check. No, we're not going to do that yet. But also we can analyze about the budgets in the world. I mean, countries, they have to have a budget. As you can see here, the largest budget, of course, is the one from the US, about revenues, about expenditures, and well, interesting. So uh, they have a deficit, right? And here is the percentage. So this is just a rate when you divide the revenues uh, against the expenditures. This was for the 2020 year. So uh, the next one was China, India, and so on. So a lot of money, right? This is just for the government to work for the operations of the government. Uh, from uh, Latin America, we can see that the biggest one is the one from Brazil. And then we have Mexico. El Salvador, where is El Salvador? Oh, it's 100 something, as I remember. Uh, here is it, 103. This was uh, an estimated for 2017. So it's not a good comparison because it's not even the same year. But anyways, we have an idea about that one. And another interesting thing is that, uh, I mean, you can see that almost everybody, every country, almost all the world, they have a deficit. They don't have a surplus. So they need more money than the one that they can have. So uh, I believe... Mm -hmm. I believe, teacher, that that happened because it's the 2020 is the year of the pandemic. So a lot of countries that maybe has a lot of countries that have a, a really good power, maybe they lose power for those years. Uh, yeah, definitely. It, it may be a, a, a cause for this to happen. So. Um, I'm sorry, somebody was going to say something else? Smallest one, Wallace, and, well, they don't have any. So, uh, for, I, I didn't know that this country exists. Actually, to kill you, Pitcairn Islands. Yeah, islands that are small countries, right? Niu, Mansoura, there is uh, almost all these countries are very, very small, right? So, it makes sense that they don't have a lot of uh, money in the in their budget, right? So that would be it. 
and this is well, yeah, that will be it. So it's very interesting this part. Now we're gonna move on and we're gonna speak about financial statements. So what are financial statements? So let's see, we're gonna start reading uh, with David. Could you please help me with this first part? Oh, David is not here, I guess. Okay, Ana Claudia. Yes, teacher. Okay. What are financial statements, right? Yeah. Okay. What are financial state what are financial statements? Financial statements are written records that convey convey the business activities in the financial performance of the company. Financial statements are often audited by government agencies, accountants, firms, etc., to ensure accuracy and for tax, financer, financing, or investing purposes. For profit, primary financial statements include the balance sheet, income statement, statement of cash flow, and a statement of change in equity. Nonprofit entities use a similar but different set of financial statements. Okay, so what do you get from this? Uh, he's describing what is a financial statement for the company. Is all the record is the history that the company has for the activities where the incomes are coming from. Uh, is very important and is sensitive information because uh, if they are audited by the government and if an illegal procedure comes up or uh litigation who who will start up with uh any thing uh, the accounting company can find will find is i think it's sensitive information is crucial for a company perfect definitely so it's going to show exactly what's going on with the company right this is very important because mm -hmm. of that anybody can see what's going on if the company is healthy, if it's not healthy, things like that one, right? Okay. That's right. Thank you. So there are a few uh, key takeaways. Financial statements are written records that can be the business activities and the financial performance of an entity. Definitely, right? The balance sheet provides an overview of assets, liabilities, and sh uh, shareholders' equity as a snapshot in time. So yeah, quickly you can see what's going on there. The income statement primarily focuses on a company's revenues and expenses during a particular period. Once expenses are subtracted from revenues, the statement produces a company profit figure called net income. So all those things are very important whenever you are creating this one. The cash flow statements or CFS measures how well a company generates cash to pay its debt obligations, fund its operating expenses and fund investments. And this may, uh, the statement of changes uh, in equity records how profits are retained within a company for future growth or distributed to external parties. So these are the key things about what we're going to read about today. Okay, so what uh, should we do or why we, how we have to understand financial statement? David, could you please help us reading this? Of course, understanding financial statements. Investors and financial analysts rely on financial data to analyze the performance of a company and make predictions about the future duration of the company's stock price. One of the most important resources of reliable in audited financial data is the annual report, which contains the first financial statements. <coughs> Sorry. The financial statement are used by investor market analysts and creditors to evaluate a company financial health and earnings potential. The three major financial statement reports are the balance sheet, income statements, and the statements of cash flows. Good. What do you get from this? Well, we need not, not only understand how to do the statements, the financial statement, not only know how to word is a statement, 
but uh, uh, also who is the people that is interested in, in analyze the data that we have in that statement. It, 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 really, I was uh, doing my, my taxes and I was asking for the for the letter in the past, the, the company give you a letter that have all of the all of the ways and what was paid, paid already paid because you paid rent every every month. And I asked him, the accountant said it's not not ready, it's not ready. But uh, finally, sent me you can go to the to the web page and there is all of that but i go to the i went to the ministry i seen the patient already they have all the information yeah <laughs> they have, they know more they know my expense <laughs> better than me <laughs> and, and they they made the invoice and you need to pay that and it's already done and we need to know the the statement and we need to know what is the use of that statement it is important so definitely. So yeah, we need to understand what you can see into that one. What means this or this other number uh, or which ones are the ones that you need to check into that one. Everything is important, but there are some accounts uh, within them that you need to look into that one. So not all financial statements are created equally. The rules used by U.S. companies is called general acceptor accounting principles. While the rules often used by international companies is International Financial Reporting Standards, IFRS. In addition, U.S. government agencies use a different set of financial reporting rules. That is a pain in the head. So definitely, I used to work for a bank. It was crazy. I mean, I, we used to create the, uh, all the reports for the central bank and superintendency and for the headquarters in Germany, you know, it was very difficult because accounting, they closed the accounting, right? Here in El Salvador and all we done all the laws. But when they passed the, uh, the balance to us, we needed to change because there were different accounts from international rules and different accounts from the El Salvador rules. So we needed to go and look and sometimes we had to split things. But that, if we change one account, sometimes affects not only one, sometimes depending on what we are doing, affects two or three other accounts. So uh, it was it was crazy. I didn't sleep many nights because of this. <laughs> it was very, very difficult because, um, I mean, sometimes we run the, because the, we had like a script, you know, uh, software for that one that look for many things. Sometimes we lost, six million dollars and we were like my goodness where are those six million dollars so we had to look manually and it was a huge file and i mean it was crazy at the end we were able to do it but yeah uh, it was crazy so let's start with the balance sheet so um jose wilfredo could you please help us with this okay balance sheet the balance sheet provides an overview of a company's assessed liabilities and uh, shareholders equally as a snapshot in time. The date at the top of the balance sheet tells, tells you when the snapshot was taken, which is generally the end of the reporting period. Below is a, a breakdown of the items in the balance sheet. Very good. So in general, that is the balance sheet, right? So it's like an overview of the company's assets, liabilities, and shareholders. So shareholders is re related to the capital, right? So the assets are uh, all the goods that the company have, and liabilities are all the debts. So could you please continue with assets? Okay. Assets, cash and cash e equivalents are liquid assessed, which may include treasury, bills, and certificates of deposit. Accounts receivables are the amount of the money owed 
to the company by its customers for the sale of its pro uh, of its product and service. Inventory is the goods a company has on hand, which are intended to be sold as a course of business. Inventory may include finished goods, work in progress that is not yet finished, or raw materials on hand that they that have yet to be worked. Prepaid expenses are costs that they have been paid in advance of when they are due. These expenses are recorded as a necessity because their value of then has not yet been recognized. Should the benefit not recognized, the company will theoretically be due a reap. Properly planned, the and equipment are capital assessed on by a company for its long-term benefit. This includes buildings used for manufacturing or heavy machinery Machinery. Used, used for processing raw materials. They're up to there. Uh, so what did you get for the first uh, account? Um, for the first point, uh, where it says account receivables. Uh, for Yeah, for the first account that you uh, read. I mean, these are accounts inside of the balance sheet. So... Uh, in general, what did you get in this? In general, is that you when you have a company, uh, you have to to make an inventory, uh, to gather uh, the real information about your uh, balance, maybe for your company, or um, what is the cost of your company, because as you know, uh, desktop. That that is that is a a, a cost of money that the company invests. And McCarry uh is the same. So maybe this is to get the the real value of the company. Okay, definitely. So yeah, this is for for us to check the value that the company has all the assets, right? And as you can see, something interesting happens. So on the assets and and the accounts. We start uh, or on the top, we have the ones that are more liquid, the ones that have, uh, I mean, that are able for you to take the money and that's it. So the first one is cash and cash equivalent. So liquid assets, so money that you can actually get uh, and maybe treasure bills or certificates or deposit, uh, checks, things like that one. And then we have the other one is less liquid, right? Account receivables. So are like uh, things that promises for sales or uh, something like that. Inventory is the next because you can transform that into money and so on. So the first one are going to be related to liquidity, the way that you are going to get money uh, as soon as possible, right? Yeah. All right. The other part is going to be for, let's see, we're going to start with investment. Uh, here we're going to start. And this is going to be for Roxana. Investment are assets held for a speculative future growth. These aren't used in operation. They are simple, simple held for capital appreciation. Uh, trademarks parents, goodwill, and other intangible assets can physically be touched by, but, sorry, but have future economic and often long-term benefits for, for the company. Hey, let's make a pause there and tell me what did you understand on this part? Well, um, that point um, talking about uh, when you create in your in your uh, company uh, some invest investment but um, you 
in, in, the, in the present, you don't receive a, a benefit about that. Uh, same when they are talking about intangible asset because uh, maybe uh, this is another type of in investment and you don't receive in the present a benefit about that. You can see the, the amount of your invest in the in the balance sheet, but you don't you, you can receive in that moment your benefits maybe uh, for example you, you can imagine um prestamo um, no no uh, ahorros a plazo ahorro plazo es long term right long term savings yeah Okay, uh, when you uh, get a long term, a long term, you say? Mm -hmm. Long term savings. Okay, long term savings, uh, you, you can uh, um, ask, or, or the bank ask in what uh, moment, in that, in, uh, about what moment you, you can, or you, you, you decide to receive your benefits. You can receive your benefits uh, maybe for months, monthly or annually or it depends about what time do you work with that long term setting. And in that case, you can uh, see the amount in the balance sheet, but you don't uh, see the benefits in that moment. You, see, do, you have um, a specific amount in a invest or an in, or, or, in, or or in an intangible but you can touch it so you, you, you just see that information in the in the liability but you don't receive a maybe in the present the benefits okay so yeah something like that one so it's going to be Assets that are not that easy to transform into money, right? That yes, we have it, and they have represent an amount of money, and it's good for us. But I mean, yeah, there are things that uh, it's not possible just to transform into money. So now we're gonna go to liabilities. Could you please continue with liabilities? Okay, liabilities. Accounts payable are the bills due as part of the normal course of operation of a business. This includes utility bills, rent, invoice, and obligation to buy raw materials. Wakes payable are payments due to a staff for time work. Notes payables are records, debt instruments that record official debts agreements, including the payment schedule, schedule and amount. Dividends payable are dividends that have been declared, 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 or de declared. Declared. Okay, declared to be a word to shareholder by, uh, but sorry, but have not yet been paid. Long term debt can include a variety of obligation, including a Thinking bond fund, more more mortgage or other loans that are due in their entry in longer than one year. Not that the short term portion is for oh, sorry. Not that the short term portion of this step if the court has a current liability. Okay, what did you understand on this one? When you are talking about liabilities, you are um, talking about accounts payable. Uh, all the things that you need to pay, weights, uh, interest, uh, different um, service or products or products that you uh, receive in a specific moment and you need to pay for it. Uh, also, uh, if you uh, need to 
distribute in the future um, dividends. So the dividends, uh, you maybe you you can calculate in around or, or since the the, the, the January, but you can this you no regularly the companies pay the actions at the end of the year, but you, you need to create a provision and you need to uh, show it in the in the balance sheet. And let me see also more mortgage and other loan when you uh, receive um bank benefits or yeah mortgage you need to uh, show that information in the in the statement but in general when you are talking about liabilities that is all the obligation of the company and they need to create a provision or or or, or pay about that okay so yes this is the other part right so remember that the uh, balance sheet is an equation so the sum of liabilities and uh, shareholders equity i mean uh, the capital part is going to be equal to the asset so it has to be something like that and these are things that you need to pay right some of the payments or the first accounts are going to be uh, payments that you have to do in the short term so maybe not right now but very soon right maybe this month or this week and so on sometimes we have long-term debt uh, like mortgage i mean sometimes yeah we have to have a loan because uh, or give as a guarantee our building or our house or something like that so that is a mortgage and some other loans that uh, yeah because of the amount of money is going to be uh, for a longer period of time uh, so that is a very very interesting thing very important and uh, it's part of the balance i mean all the companies they have liabilities uh, uh this is very similar to the people right we all the people at some point we always have liabilities some some things to pay so that is for sure so shareholders equity that is going to be for Dora elizabeth shareholders equity shareholder equity is a company total asset minus its total liabilities shareholders equity also now a stockholders equity represent the amount of money that could be returned to shareholders if all of the assets were liquid and all the company debit was paid off. Retainer earnings are part of the shareholders' equity and there are amount or net earnings there that were not paid to shareholders as dividends. Hey, what do you get into that one? Uh, the, this is a, a part of the cheat balance. Um, <clears throat> This part is a, uh, is a, the part is the shareholders, shareholders is, is uh, oh, this part, is the investment. And uh, addition, uh, in this part, uh, describes the, uh, the the earnings uh, the earning is no no uh, distributors distributors in in the in the charlos horse i know uh, okay so yeah this is a, a part of the equations as we were saying right so uh the shareholders i mean is is part i mean is the portion that uh, people that were part of the company they provide the money for that one so that is a very important part of this and uh, we have a, an example here we have total assets for 338.9 billion dollars liabilities were for 
163.2 billion and the total equity was 175.7 billion and the total liabilities uh, and equity were 338.9 billion which equals the total assets for the period and here here is the uh, balance as you can see I'm, i don't know if you are able to see it but this is it i mean uh, most uh, of the times when we present uh, the balance sheet we are going to present uh, the current period and the last period for people to be able to compare what's going on right for example if we check about uh, well, here we have assets and this is also the way that uh, in accounting uh, is shown these kind of things so this means that this account is part of this account and that this account i mean the cash and cash equivalent is part of current assets and current assets is part of assets so there are accounts inside of the accounts and then we can compare as well i mean uh in 2021 we had 6802 million dollars and for uh, the 2020 we have 4364 million so that means that at least in cash and liquidity we have more money uh, this year, I mean, the, the year that we're presenting the current balance sheet. That is interesting, right? But it's not enough. We need to go through the other accounts, like, for example, notes and accounts receivable. Uh, we have inventories and inventories. We also have, in this case, oil products and merchandise. And you can see that it's almost the same, right? So here is almost, almost the same. Materials and supplies, uh, very similar as well. Other current assets, very similar as well. And then we have investment advances and long-term receivables. Um, so this is going to depend on the kind of company that we are going to handle in this. Many companies, I mean, if it's a service company or if it's a retailer, uh, of course, it's going to be different. Some accounts that we are going to have here, not the main ones that are asset and liability, but the accounts that are inside might be different. Uh, and also we have other assets. So at the end, if we see in general, we can see that uh, we, uh, in the current period, we have more assets. And uh, the almost everything is kind of the same. Maybe the ones that have more impact are the property, plants, and equipment. So it seems that last period was bigger, but uh, also in notes, and also in cash and equivalent, we have more this year. So also we can check about the liabilities. We have the current liabilities and then notes and loans payable, so things that we have to pay. You can see here that the uh, last uh, period we had a lot. This one, we don't have that much. That is a very good thing, right? Accounts payable and accurate liabilities. Also, there is a difference, but this is the other way around. We have more this period than the past period. Uh, income taxes payable, uh, there is a difference as well. Um, and at the current, to uh, the total ones, you can see that we have more this current year uh, in general. But we also have long term debt that we had more last year, uh, password fair benefits reserves, the and other accounts like deferred income tax liabilities loan terms and other long term obligations and here is it so you can see that part and at the end we have the equity right so we have common stocks that this is the capital money that people have put into the into the company with shares that you can buy or sell depending on the company uh, earnings so all the things that uh, depending on the transaction that we have we earned um, so negative everything that we have a, in a parenthesis is going to be negative so mm, the accumulator uh, uh, of other companies income it was negative but just we have earning and reinvested so we reinvest uh, we put the money back into the, into the company and uh, we have also common stocks and uh, well this is for next one that is not a good example i guess and non-controlling interest and at the end uh, we have the total liability equity so if we summarize everything uh, it should be equal everything 
and this is an example. I mean, this is for a millionaire company, uh, but you don't have to present a lot of things. Yes, uh, in the software of the company, or if you need to check more in deep, it's possible to see all the accounts and check the relation with uh, the rest of the company. So that is the way that we usually do this. Do you have any questions about this? No, teacher. Good. And of course, we have the income statement. So the first part of the introduction is for uh, Luis Albert, Steve. Okay. <clears throat> income statement. Unlike the balance sheet, the income statement covers a range of time which is a year for annual financial statement or an acquired for a quarterly financial statement. <clears throat> the income statement provides an overview of revenues, expenses, net income, and earning per share. Good, what do you get from this part? <clears throat> this part is show uh, all the statement in, in a period of the time. You can well, it depends on the, the the enterprise or or the balance. Uh, if you can show in a quarterly or a annual. In some cases, uh, most of enterprise, I. Uh, I think they are show annual financial. Sometimes quarter is if they need a to 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 look for a specific a thing or 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 maybe a goal or or or, or something like that. Okay. Uh, very good. So, yes, this is a little bit different from the balance sheet. I mean, every month, every company has to have a balance sheet. And at the end, uh, there is a summarize at the end of the year, so you can compare the cycles, right? Uh, the same happens with the income statements. But sometimes you are able to compare quarterly as well. Um, uh, that is something that we don't do most uh, mostly all the time with the balance sheet, but just with the income statement. Why? Because here is where we are going to check about the revenues. Right. So that is a very important word for uh, the company. So uh, all the expenses, all the revenue, the net income, and the uh, earnings per share. So that is all the profit that everybody that is the owner of the company is going to get because of the operations. So this is a very important as well. So it's not, I mean, the operation of the company, but also how to, uh, we are spending the money on what uh, at the end. I mean, remember that every company, um, the main goal is to have some uh, revenue, right? To have earnings at the end. So this is a very important. Good, perfect. So the introduction here or this part of the revenue is going to be for uh, Giselle. Not possible. Let's see then. Jose Osmin. Okay, not possible. So let's check then. Me, teacher. Okay, please go ahead then with revenue. Revenue. <clears throat> Sorry, revenue. Operating revenue is the revenue earned by selling a company's products or services. The operating revenue for an auto manufacturer will be realized through the production and sale of autos. Operating revenue is generated from the core business activities of a company. Non-operating non -operating revenue is the income earned from from non-core business activities. 
these revenues follow side follow side the primary function of the business. Some non-operative revenue examples include interests earned on a, on cash in the bank, rental income from a property, income from strategic partnerships like royalty payment receipts, income from an advertisement displays locating, located on the company's property. Other income is the revenue earned from other activities. Other income could include gains from the sale of long-term assets, such as land, vehicles, or a subsidiary. Okay, what do you get from this? <clears throat> uh, okay, first of all, the revenue is uh, the money that you earn by obviously like, like uh, they, li like the lecturer said, here, by selling your products or services or trading your products or services, yeah? So, uh, but the main revenue or like the lecturer says the operating revenue is all the money earned by the by your core business operation yeah mm. let's see if you are a tech company or maybe a, a company that sells computers or tech parts or something like this the operating revenue is the all the money earned by the sales of these goods and services yeah but if the if the company uh, has uh, for example a uh, a property yeah and it's located at the beach yeah like a beach house yeah uh, you can earn another kind of revenue or another type of revenue that is not uh, from your core business yeah it's I don't know if the term is right, like a side hustle. Okay. Yeah. So uh, there is another kind or type of revenue, the revenue that is not generated from the uh, from the main activity, yeah, uh, of of the business or of the company. Yeah. Um what else? Uh the examples are very clear. I think the interest, uh, interest earned on a, on cash, yeah, in bank when you put your 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 money to work, yeah, and for example, you have ten ten uh, sorry uh, one hundred dollars and you uh, put in the bank in your bank account in a long term uh, long term um, sorry teacher the, the other word como plazo long term uh, saving yeah yeah the long term saving yeah saving and at the end you get not only your uh, one hundred dollars yeah maybe for example one one hundred and five dollars yeah that five dollars are the revenue that is not from your core business it's uh, earned obviously like the lecturer says on on cash in the bank yeah it's another kind of revenue but it's it's not related with the main activity yeah all all the all the activities that you do in order to earn money, yeah, after sales, after taxes, after all the all the the things that you have to pay by by legal terms is the revenue, yeah. Okay, so yeah, definitely. So that is it. So the revenue are the incomes that you have because of two reasons. One is the operating revenue that is like the purpose of your a business right so if you sell cars because of you are selling cars you have you have some revenue 
And the other ones are non-operating revenue. So are the ones that because of all the reasons you got an income. So that will be it. And on the other hand, we have the expenses. Uh, okay, this is going to be for, let's see. William Alexander. Not possible. Let's check then. Uh, Marcus, Jose Marcus. Expenses. Primary expenses are incurred during the process of earning revenue from the primary activity of the business. Expenses include the cost of goods sold, a selling, general and administrative expense, depreciation and amortization, and research and development. Type, type call expense includes employee wage, sales commissions, and utilities such as electricity and transportation. Expense that are linked to secondary activities include interest paid on loans or debt, losses from the sales of an asset or also record as expense. The main purpose of the income statement is to combi detail of profitability and the financial results of business activities. However, it can be very effective in showing where sales or revenue is increasing when compared over multiple periods. Investors can also see how well a company's management is controlling expenses to determine where company's effort in reducing the cost of sales might boost profit over time. Okay, very good. So what do you get from this? Okay, um, uh, I understand that the expenses, um, there are like two types of expenses. The primary are the, like the administrative expenses, uh, depreciation, amortization, and also include like the employee wage and some utilities. And also, there are the secondary uh, expenses, uh, like the interest paid on loans or debt, and uh, loses from sales or an asset, because sometimes in, um, when they selling are selling something, maybe they lose some money. So uh, the expenses is important to measure because uh, we can see the profitability of the business comparing the incomes and the outcomes and we compare with a uh, multiple period we can determine or see where uh, sales or revenue is increasing so it's important to like um label or yeah like label these kind of expenses so we can determine if we are wasting money or we're truly uh, investing that money in something good okay very good so yeah the expenses is the other hand right so anything that you uh, pay for so that is going to be like that one so some typical expenses are the employee wages, the commissions, utilities, uh, facilities, uh, maintenance, things like that, one, right? Uh, it's very interesting what it says that um, losses from the sale of an asset are also recorded as expenses. So it's not a profit, but, you know, there is depreciation and things like that, that in accounting is going to be like... Uh, a loss, but sometimes it's not like that. It's a different thing, but it's it's like that. It's uh, like the other hand, and we have an example here of an income statement. So this is a portion of Exxon Mobil Corporation. This is uh for the same period. The total revenue was two hundred seventy six point seven billion dollars. The total costs were two hundred fifty four point four billion money. 
uh, dollars, I'm sorry. And the net income, that is what is important here, or profit was $23 billion. That was for one year. And we have here the example. So uh, this is says consolidated because, I mean, there are many accounts, but we just show like the main ones. And uh, very interesting because here we have three periods. You can see 2018, 2020, and 2021. Okay, and uh, we have some accounts here as well, uh, revenues and other income, and one of the accounts inside of that one, sales and other operating revenue, which is one of the most important, as you can see here, is the main, the main uh, reason, the main source of money for, I mean, for all the periods, that should be the way, right? Uh, equity affiliates, that is something like for the shareholders uh, and other incomes. So this is not operative, right? Total revenues and other income, this is it. So you can see here that the best year was the 2021. And we have the costs and other deductions. Crude oil and product purchases, this is because this is a company about uh, oiling, right? Uh, production and manufacturing expenses. Uh, you can see in these accounts uh, a comparative and yeah, also besides that we have more income, also we spent more money, right? Production and manufacturing expenses, depreciation is a very important part of, of these things. So uh, it's going to uh, take out the life of uh, the goods that we have, right? Exploration expenses, including dry holes, because of the of the business that we are talking about is very similar, actually. Non-service pension and uh, post-retirement benefit expense, uh, interest expense, other taxes and duties, a lot of money in taxes, right? So those are million dollars, or it's 30,000 mi 30, million dollars. That's a lot of money. And we have, at the end, the total cost and other deductions. So... And uh, then we have the income loss before income taxes. Uh, so you can see here that for 2020, there was a loss. But for the other periods for both uh, 2019 and 2021, yeah, we have some income, right? Some benefits you can see here. And uh, just by checking here, we can say that we had a very difficult year on 2020. Uh, probably because of pandemic, as Wilfredo said. And, uh, but this year we are recovering. So yeah, we are doing that one. Actually, yeah, I remember that the oil, the oil uh, companies, the oil industry was affected. I mean, uh, oil was very, very cheap. Nobody w was outside. So uh, that happened a lot. So that makes sense, right? So we can, we can assume that that is the, the reason why, okay? Very interesting. So do you have any questions about this statement of income? Okay, let's move on, my friends, because we have the cash flow statement. Uh, Francisco, Eduardo, could you please help me reading this part? Not possible. Uh, let's see, Jarvin, Isaac. Fernando Marvin. Sure, teacher. Is it possible for you to read right now? Yeah, it's possible. I just arrived home. Okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Cash flow statement. The cash flow statement measures how well a company generates cash to pay its debt obligations, fund its operating expenses, and fund investment. The cash flow, the cash flow, sorry, the cash flow statement complete complement the balance sheet and income statement. The CFS allow investors to understand how a company's operation are running where its money is coming from and how money is being spent. The CFS also provides insights 
as to whether a company is on a solid financial footing. There is no formula per se for calculating a cash flow statement. Instead, it's contained three sections that report cash flow for the various activity for which a company uses its cash. Those three components of the of the CFS are listed below. So what do you get from this part? Um, I understand cash flow statement. It's by uh, where's the money is coming from, and and how how the money is gone. <laughs> so this is an statement for for track uh, the cash that you have in your company. So it's a a content report, right? Yeah. So I I heard about something like that in my my accounting class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a very important one. So the cash flow statement definitely uh, helps actually understand uh, a bit, uh, how the operations are running. I mean, where is coming the money, uh, how you are spending the money. Uh, and you can see through that one the decisions that people are making in the company. Uh, so, or you also can see um, where the company is going to. I mean, if they are spending money, for example, in equipment and machinery, I mean, they are going to grow, right? So uh, many things can be shown in this one. It's a very interesting one. And uh, we're going to continue checking into that one right away, of course. So we have the operating activities. Uh, that is going to be for, let me check, David. Okay. Operating activities, the operating activities of the CFS include any source of uses of cash from running the business and selling the products or service. Cash from operations include any change made in cash accounts and survival, depreciation, inventory, and accounts payable. These transactions also include wage, income tax payments, interest payments, rent, and cash received from the sale of a product or service. So what do you get from this? These are the, the expenses of the, fun the functioning, functioning, no, I don't know, operating, like how the business do their business. Is they sell, if they have a, a uh, store in a, in a, located in some places, in important places. All of the expenses that they need to do, the, the people that sell, the energy, all of the, the, the costs that uh, the business is, oper is operating in, a, in the field that they are working. And uh, we need to include all, all of this to know if we are earning or we are losing money. If we don't know how uh, how are or, or how much we are spending or how much are our expenses, we don't know how much are our earnings. Uh, there are some expenses that uh, we don't see what uh, we are doing, it, and uh, it is important to to take note of that. There are some advices for personal accountability, for personal budget that the people that know how to do these things, they advise to us that we need to take care of the and, and expenses. The little expenses that we do every, every day, uh, many times, and the, the, this little expense can uh, be a problem if we don't take care of that. Okay, so definitely. So this is a very important thing. Uh, here we can see all the activities that are related with the operations, right? So cash from operations or uh, receivable depreciation, inventory, anything that is relative with uh, the operations is, is there and it's important. I mean, by seeing these accounts, even if you don't go to the uh, to the factory and see all the much and machines working, you can understand the business. So this is the magic of accounting, right? So and you can understand the decision that people are making, where are they going to? It's a very good thing, right? On the other hand, we have investing activities. 
that is going to be for Roxana. Investing activities. Investing activities include any sources and use of cash from as a company invest investment in a long term future of the company. A put a purchase purchase of say or sale. Say, I'm sorry. I'm no. trying to to. Uh, Talking, yeah, no, but I trying to talk in, um, but I, I right now I I I I have brackets, so oh. it's a little difficult for me. That's why I I have problem, but no I, I use yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> Investing activities include any sources and use of cash for from a companies. A company's investment in the long term future of the company, a purchase of or sale of an asset, loans made to vendors or received the sales from customers, or any payments related to a mer merge, merger, merger, or a Acquisition is included in this category. Also, purchase of fixed access such such has property, plant, and equipment PPE are included in this section. In short, change in equipment, asset, or investment related related to cash from investing. Okay, what do you get from this? Well, in general, uh, the program uh, talk about any uh, or all the investment that uh, the company creates. For example, uh, if they uh, buy um, equipment for the informatic department, IT department, uh, they need to uh, create that, that section in the statement because uh, you assign a uh, amount for that equipment. So in the in the last uh, you you say you, you mentioned depreciation and that that's why it's important uh, when the company uh, invests in, in different uh, ways show that information because not only you need to uh, create a section for the investing also you need to create a section for the procession about that investing that they uh, generate and the par the paragraph mentioned a uh, property plant and equipment when you uh, for example um get a building, you need to assign the amount about that uh, buy. And mm -mm, let me see. Yeah, that is. Okay. Uh, yes, I mean, this is a very important part of this uh, financial statement. I mean, all the investment that you are going to have, purchase of sale or asset or things like that one are going to uh, reflect what are the intentions of the company. So this is a very important part of uh, the cash flow. And at the end, well, not at the end, but it says, yeah, at the end, financial activities. Uh, this is going to be for, let's see, Dora Elizabeth. Financial activities. Cash from financial activities includes the source for, of cash from investors or banks as well as the use for cash paid to shareholders. Financial activities include debt issues, equity issues, stock repurchases, loans, dividends, paid, and repayment of debt. The cash flow statement reconciles the income statement with the balance sheet in three major business activities. Perfect. What did you understand on that one? Uh, in this case, 
eh, the financial activities, eh, there, there are many forms or for the companies eh, receive financial, maybe for the investor board, eh, or loans funds, or, 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 or Charles home in poor money. Eh, for um, eh, more later, receive the uh, earning. Okay, so yes, this is cash that we get from financial activities. So there are different sources for this one, like investors, banks, loans, uh, debt issuance, uh, equity issuance. Issuance is like an issue, right? Uh, issue is not only a problem, but also, for example, if you read comics, you have the issue of November, the issue of December. So it's like emitting something, right? Uh, loans, dividends, paid, uh, things like that one. So it's going to be part of this statement. And, of course, we have uh, an example. In this way, we have operating activity generated a positive cash flow for of $48 billion. Is investment activities generate a negative cash flow or cash outflows of minus 10.2 billion for the period. Additions for uh, two property plants and equipment made up the majority of cash outflow. Mm, that is interesting, which means the company invested in new fixed assets. Financial activities generate a negative cash flow or cash outflow of minus 35.4 billion uh, for the period. Reduction in short-term debts and dividends paid out made up the majority of cash flow. And here is the example of this part. So you can see is also comparing the three years, the three periods, we have the cash flow from operating activities like net income or loss, including non-controlling interest. So again, for the 2020, not a good year, right? So you can see that some numbers are in red. Uh, we have adjustment for non-cash transactions that includes depreciations and depiction that includes in payments. Uh, well, that's not good. Uh, deferred income taxes, charges or credits, uh, post retirement benefit expense in excess or less than the payments, and other long-term obligations provisions. We also include here dividends received greater than or less than the equity in current earnings or equity companies. And we have the changes of operational and working capital, excluding cash and debt, because that is in the other part uh, above, right? So we have the reduction and the increase. And there are numbers for all of them, like notes uh, and accounts receivable, inventories, other current assets, and account and other payables. And we have net gain, loss, or asset sales. That is a very important part as well. Uh, other items like nets, and we have the net cash provided by operating activities. This is a very important number. So we can see that for 2020, we have $48,129 uh, million. That is a very good number. Uh, cash flow from investing activities and uh, additions to property plan and equipment. This one has negative numbers, but it's not bad because that means that the company is investing. So they are growing. They are renewing everything, so you they are going to be more efficient. So not all the red numbers are going to be bad numbers. Sometimes sometimes that's good, right? Uh, and we have others like proceeds from asset sales, additional investment in advances, other investment activities. And at the end, we have the cash flows from financial activities like addition for long-term debt, uh, the reductions, additions, and some other reductions. Um, not a big impact on that one. And some contingent consideration payment, cash dividends, changes in non-controlling interest. Uh, another one that is important is the effects of exchange rate uh, changes of cash. So uh, yeah, we have this in negative, but we are investing in equipment. So that makes sense. We have the increase or decrease in cash and cash equivalents and the cash and cash equivalent in beginning of the year. and at the end of the year. So this year at the end is, is better than the other years, according to this one, even better than 2019. 
that was expected, for example, for 2020. Any questions for the ExxonMobil cash flow? Okay. okay very good last one is the statement of changes in shareholder equity all right let's try to read into this one so uh let's read on the first part i guess everything is going to be read team could you please help me reading this me teacher okay go ahead please statement of change in shareholder equity the statement of changes in equity drives total liquidity over time. This information ties back to a balance sheet for the same period. The ending balance of the change of equity statement is equal to the total equity report on the balance sheet. The formula to for change of to shareholder equity will vary from company to company. In general, there are a couple of components. Beginning equity, there is the equity at the end of the last period that simply rolls to the start of the next period. Net income, there is the amount of income the company earned in a given period. The proceeds from operation are automatically recognized as equity in the company, and this income is rolled into retail earnings at the end. The dividends. This is the amount of money that is paid out to shareholders from profits. Instead of keeping of all of a company's profits, the company may choose to give some profits away to investors. Other comprehensive income. This is the period over period change in other comprehensive income, depending on transactions. This figure might be an addition or subtraction for equity. Okay, so what do you get from this? Uh, okay, there is a comparing. Uh, can you scroll up, please? I, uh, I didn't realize what are the two statements. The first statement, statement of change in equity, and uh, the other one is balance sheet. Okay, statement of change in shareholder. Statement of change in equity. It is talking about a. Uh, this word is giving some problem for me because assets is equal to uh, this part equity plus something more. But uh, I try to understand that it's something that the shareholders earn uh, and it's a part of the of the profit of the company uh, and uh, they need to this is the the basic principle of the of the accountability. The the uh, I don't know how to say in in English, but in Spanish is por partida doble. You mm -hmm. make a church, and in some part, this church is reflected in another part, and this is the the basic of doing well because you can give compare every time. In this case, the equity in the in, in the first statement needs to be equal to the uh, equity in the balance sheet at the end of the period, the same period, and you can compare that that is uh, important. Uh, obviously, the IRS always knows what are the comes in, in USA, uh, and uh, they. Uh, can follow, but, but these this situations is uh, like in our country, uh, every expense you do with your credit card, the, this information goes to all of the bank in the system, even though it's not your bank, but all of the bank know what are your, what are your expenses with credit card, and that information goes always, uh, also to the Ministry of Hacienda. They have the, the information, all of the information that uh, you can uh, lie to them because they know what are your expenses. They have the information and that is the case uh, here. You can lie what is your your earns and what are the taxes you need to pay. 
there are some situations that uh, influential people like the former president Donald Trump that is trying to not pay taxes, but the government have all of the information and they can follow the, the situation of each one. Uh, through this principle that uh, is double a uh, register, every asset, every uh, equity, every information in the statements are registered in many parts. And it's impossible, impossible. When you see a movie, they some of the investigation that I, I think is real that they they say hey, follow the money, follow the money, follow the money. And they are following the money because they have the information that all of the money and they are looking for someone or they are following someone. Uh, okay, his credit card was used in that part. The information goes to, to the central of intelligence and it's the same with us, <laughs> but uh, they are not following us, but <laughs> they know that our expenses and uh, it, all of the, the statements have a, a comparison. Okay, so yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this is one of the most important because of of the dividends, right? So yes. uh, this is a little formula that we have as we uh, checked before. It's not a fixed formula. You can add or uh, do this in different ways, but the most common is this one, net income. So it's going to be the one after taxes, right? So, and then uh, that comes also from the previous period. And then the dividends, I mean, that's what we're going to have for the shareholders. So at the, uh, the end, the purpose of a company is to get profits. And those profits, get, they get to the people that are the owners of the company. So those are called dividends. So you tell to everybody, here is your money. Sometimes they decide to reinvest. Right? So we are not going to take that one, reinvest, so we can duplicate or triplicate the next year or something like that. And some other comprehensive income. So that depends on what is going on with the company. So that will be it. I mean, uh, this is kind of simple. And this is an example. In this one, in excess mobile statement of changes in equity, the company also records activity for acquisitions, dispositions, amortization of stock-based awards, and other financial activity. This information is useful to analyze, the, to determine how much money is being retained by the company for future growth, as opposed to being distributed externally so yes this is a business but sometimes if we want to have more we can invest more and this is the example okay uh, so this is just for one period uh, you can see here that actually have the 2018 then 19 then the 20 and at last the 21 so that is because we start for the 2018 um, money that it comes right from that one so there are three periods, uh, and then we move that one to the other one. So, um, and we have here the common stock, earning or invested, accumulated or other comprehensive income, common stock held in treasury, and the share of equity, non-controlled interest, and total equity. As you can see here, they didn't uh, give the div dividends so uh, they reinvest in that one and they were some losses right so in that period was losses and uh, also in the other period so uh, they can reinvest the money and this is what is showing at this point good the good thing is that we were able to check all the information today so very very nice a lot of uh, words a lot of things that are interesting and if you have the chance you can check into that one more in depth this is definitely for companies not for people okay my friends do you have any questions before we finish today not to share it's Good. important amount of information but you need to assimilate <laughs> uh, definitely very good so uh we're going to check the attendance and the 101 of today is for Roxana. So let's see how it goes, the attendance. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. 
Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Present. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Present teacher. Good. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Luis Albert C. Bonilla Canales. Present teacher. Good. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. And Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Present. Good. Here, my I don't friends. Know if was my internet, but I guess that my name was was all. Yeah, I checked. I checked that already. Don't worry. I saw that you were here. Okay. All right. Perfect. So, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. Rest very well and see ya tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank nice. you. Bye. Good night. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Hello, Roxanne. How are you? Hi, teacher. Um, so far, the rules, to be honest with you, this week is a little weird for me. Because and I have that? a lot of, a lot of, yeah, not only for the weather. The thing is that um, I have a lot of different uh, situations in my work new things and that's why it's a little weird but everything is okay okay yeah yeah sometimes that happens right there are changes that we don't expect so we have to embrace them and move on so oh. <laughs> okay uh well well you have experience on this one on one so the first question for you is how do you feel that you are moving on do you feel that you're learning that you are improving yeah maybe the the Think that well in my case I, I think that uh, I need to uh, talk more because uh, when I don't do this I feel like um, my vocabulary is down or como que está bajando because uh -huh, because uh, maybe when we need or, or when the situation we need to use the the um, the english is different maybe when you ask for reading some paragraph we need to use that but if we don't talk maybe that is the problem and i in my case i think that is my problem because i I, if you see, maybe sometimes I try to uh, participate, but maybe because uh, the group have a, a lot of person, it's not possible for, for, for all, right? But in general, I, I learn about the class. I just need to practice more my, my vocabulary I know and I need to read more other things not only the class okay very good so yes I mean the practice is the most important thing uh, you need to listen to yourself uh, so the way that you're speaking and things like that so that is going to also give you a chance I mean to compare whenever you say something or, or, or other people or a video say something the way that you say it uh, that is going to give you a very good understanding on on the pronunciation or the usage of the words. So, and do you have any question about any topic or anything uh, that we have checked? No, uh, in general, in general, uh, it's interesting all the 
the, the course, but uh, the new topic is more familiar for me because I'm working in financial media. And the vocabulary, you know, when you don't use uh, English in your work, all the words will be new. So, so for me, this topic is uh, interesting because it's about my work, but I don't know the whole words about my area. So it's important and I will learn more about that because maybe in the future, you know, I can change my job position and I need to improve that era. Okay, so definitely that is a very good thing that that now you know some vocabulary and yeah, continue reading about that one is good. So that definitely is a very good chance for you to improve and uh, let's say specialize in your area. So that is a very good thing. Okay, do you have uh, any anything else? I mean, remember that if you have questions, you can ask me directly in the chat or uh, in the group, in the class. Uh, even when we are not in class, you can chat with me, and of course, it would be a pleasure. Okay, thank you. And the other hand, I was uh, saying you that uh, now I, I try to talk better, but in this uh, two weeks ago, it's a little difficult because I use in Invisalign. Do you know what it is? That's why I try to uh, improve my, my pronunciation, but it's a little difficult because I'm working with with uh, the English line, and that's why maybe when I when I'm reading, I well, well, you know, my pronunciation before I think that it was better than now. But I try to work with my new brackets. Okay. Yeah, I know that that causes an effect. I mean, speaking, eating, everything is more complicated and it's related to, to your mouth, right? Because it's already there. But I mean, I was checking and it was it was good. I, I know that sometimes there are some pronunciation because the, the vocabulary is new. And since you are the one who's mm -hmm. reading, I don't say the words, but you are saying the words by the first time. Sometimes that happens, that is normal. So don't worry, everything will be very well. So um, I, I was checking that your name is De Mejia, right? So are you married? Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> we are separated maybe around nine years old. But you know, in my case, I try to spend my money in travel in different things. But now I'm working in that. Ah, okay, very well, perfect. So I was just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, perfect. It was a pleasure to be with you tonight. Have a very good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. Good night. <laughs>